Hi guys, welcome again. Um, it's Ian here from Matthews Marine and Dave helping me. Um, just out of shot, but he will be there. Um, in this video, we want to introduce you to a slightly different way of doing the upper UJ Bellow on the um, popular Volvo 290 leg. Um, and as you will see from the video, it, it just saves you having to strip the complete unit down. Hope it's of some help. Um, good luck. Hi guys, welcome again. Today we're going to be talking about DP legs. In this particular case, we're going to talk a lot about the dreaded bellows. Um, they can be an expensive thing to change, and rightly so in my view, they are a, a, a critical piece. Get it wrong, you're going to get water ingress into the boat. It's expensive, even if it doesn't cause you a lot of trouble with it coming in. It's an expensive thing to have your boat lifted and put on the yard. So it's worth getting right. And what I will say at this stage is if you are anything but confident, and this is a job that you can do if you are reasonably apt at things, but if you're not confident, leave it to somebody who knows because you'll just get more problems than it's worth. Okay, I'm gonna show you a different way of doing these, which you take your own view, it's up to yourself, but most people, especially the amateur people I come across, they will take this full, complete unit off to gain access to the bellows. Nothing wrong with that, and in some ways it's good, because it gives you the access to get at all the bits you can't normally get at, clean them up, release things, make things right. The problem being is, especially in boats like this one, where they've been a little bit unloved, or they've been underwater for a long time, You've got pins and clasps and, and cotter pins to take out. Not only are they normally seized up and awkward to do, the time scale of the job, and normally these are very top heavy units, so when you're trying to balance the skeg on, on possibly a piece of wood, because you guys probably won't have access to the correct tool which bolts on here, it ends up being a two-man job. The way I'm gonna show you is the way I do them. Um, unless the customer specifically asks for the leg to come off. Um, in this particular case, we probably will take the leg off, but I'll still nonetheless show you the quick way of doing it. There are some rules to follow, and it's a little bit more involved, and you can make things and get things wrong, which can lead to big problems. So I say again, only do it this way if you're confident in your own abilities. Okay, the next thing we need to do is because what we're actually doing um, in this particular case is we've got the oil dropping out of there normally we'd have to remove all sorts of things to get this leg off and even when we do that it's very awkward when we put this back together and Dave my able assistant will back me up on this is even with two people to orientate it all and get the drive shaft back in is very difficult the way I'm going to do it I'm going to split the gearbox top half here so we're going to remove the unit from here we're going to lift it, twist it, pull it off. And by doing that, all of this, all of the hydraulic rams, either on the early type like this one where it just rests, or the later one where it's actually um, pinned in, all of the pivot pins here, we don't have to disturb any of that. So it's a much quick, quicker and easier way of doing things. What we must do now is remove the steering helmet from our, our, uh, our way. And the way we do that is these two Allen key bolts here and the steering helmet pivot pin which is in there. They're held in with 5 16th Allen keys. And the reason I mention that is be careful because most people tend to have metric Allen keys and you will round them off if you try. Especially if there's some muck and dirt in there, you'll think it's in, you'll do it, you'll round it off. And the problem with all of these bolts is if you do damage the drive head on them, getting access to them to get them out is a pig of a job. So what we'll do is we've got these two bolts here. You'll also see there's two threaded holes at either side of them where we can either put in a slide hammer to remove it, which is the correct way, but in actual fact, you can put a threaded bolt in there, wind it in, and it, as you wind it in, it will force that pin out. 
So we need to remove these two bolts. So what we're going to do, we're going to scrape all of the muck and crap out of the hole. So take our socket, pop her in there. And what I like to do is give it a tap in. I'll just get my... My engineer's persuader. Little tap just to make sure it's in and home. And out they come. Our first one. The good news is whoever had this apart last time has bothered to grease them. So it's going to make my life very easy. Hopefully. Second one. What we're going to try and do now is remove this pivot. A little thing I sometimes do is if you pop both bolts back in slack, before you start going down the road of putting bolts to remove it, slide hammers, etc., it's sometimes quite easy just to pop them in. Stick a screwdriver between them and just give them a move. And already on this one, look, we can see that's moving freely. So what that means is I don't have to mess about any further because the chances of that are just going to come out. The reason I've just tried that is the grease there tells me that it's probably been a part linked with the lock nut on here, which was loose, which you may have seen in one of the other videos. And we can tell that this thing's been a part in a reasonable near future uh, past. Oh, brilliant and this is the, the actual pivot for the steering helmet so this is what links the left and right motion of this to the steering helmet which is driven from inside I can push this steering helmet up now out of the way and you'll now be able to see that the leg can move left and right and as you can probably hear by the crunching, we've got that many muscles in here. You can see by this boot, it's not only rock hard, it's covered in growth. And the chances are that if that's split, what we get then is water ingress through the drive shaft. And although it has a secondary seal, so it doesn't immediately flood, the problem is, is the drive shaft UJs get waterlogged and can cause lots of trouble. But we'll go into that when we get it stripped further. We've disconnected this is just simply by um, a split pin. Pull that out of there so we've got that free now. Don't be tempted to undo that one because it's a pig to get the cotter pin out the back because it hits on here. So just pop it off there, it's fine. So the next thing we need to do is we need to release the boot via this clip. And we also need to release these two bolts here. Now, what you're going to find is these are 9 16 bolts because it's American. The problem we have is where this stud is here, very close to the body. Now this particular spanner I've just modified by grinding away some of the support. So it's a much thinner spanner and it allows us to get in there. And now we can get it on. If you try and use a normal spanner, which I'll try and here, it's a much thicker body around it. And as I say, all I've done is grind that away on a bench grinder when you try and get it in you can't get the ring on the temptation then is to use the open end it's very difficult to get in and you're going to have danger of rounding it off and again like we've already said round it off at your peril because then you've got a big problem right so we've taken the nut off the other side so we've got both of those loose now the next thing we need to do is actually undo the clamp for the boot. Now the way I like to do it is when I'm stripping it, is I'll just worry about this end. Get this out of the way, it just gives a little bit uh, more access to get in the back. So, quite simply, I'm going to undo this clip. And a little word while we're doing this um, is when you do this, don't be tempted to buy the cheap snidey boots that are available on some of the internet sites you really don't gain anything from it for a small amount of financial gain will cause you so much grief in the long run 
and um, they really do and one of the biggest problems is not actually the quality of the boot although that is definitely not as good it's the quality of the stainless clips that's supplied with it and I've actually seen them where the clip has corroded across and broken and allowed water in that way so always use genuine boots is the ideal if not there are companies out there um, Repower Marina one of them that sell a really good quality aftermarket boot which is slightly cheaper than the original ones but just do not fit boots that you don't know the uh, origin of so we're going to hook that clip off out of the way and the other thing we're going to do is free this boot depending on whether people have used bellows adhesive in the past or not it's either going to come off very easily like this one looks like it's going to or it won't and now what we're going to do is take the front two allen keys which secure the rest of this top unit on so using our uh, 5 16th allen key we're just going to undo these again we've got one here and one here okay so we've removed one and now we'll do the same on this side. He says. That's the first tight one. <laughs> There's always one, Dave. Okay, so we've removed our last two bolts. So let's just recap once again. Gear selector. We've undone it, we've moved out the way. We've undone our clamp on the primary end of the gear tear and made sure that's free. We've undone our steering helmet pivot there, pushed the helmet out the way, and we've undone our two bolts at the side and our two Allen keys at the front. So now we're ready to lift off this gearbox unit. Now it does have studs coming down into here, and what we're going to find is we're going to lift this unit up, and what we have is between the drive comes in off the shaft into here, through a 90 degree bevel gear and drives down into the low portion of the leg. And what we're going to find is here, what we have is essentially a collar with a spline on it. And it, depending how it feels, will stick on the upper half or the lower half of the gearbox. And what we need to do is we're going to lift this section up a, a small amount, then we're going to get in there and we're just going to nurse it downwards. Once that happens, is we'll be able to twist this unit through 90 degrees and withdraw everything. I'll go through a couple of things you need to uh, be aware of when we lift it, but let's have a go and see what happens. Then we free the unit off and get him up to kind of this height. What I wanted to show you is this collar here. This collar will slide up and down and it links it via a spline. And what we're going to do is we're going to push him right down and lift this top section up. What normally happens, like it has on this one, is it's come off the bottom. And so what we're going to have to do is a bit of juggling. Let's just try and see if we can get it. Push that collar down. What we must do is get this collar down. So by rotating the shaft, there it goes, the collar's now dropped. Once the collar's dropped, we can twist this unit through 90 degrees and pull out the shaft. And there we go. Very, very important at this stage. Make sure no dirt gets in here, obviously. There's always a couple of spots, so where you can get a cloth over it. I've just got one or two small bits in there. And the other thing is what you have here that is incredibly important and easily lost, there is a set of shims. Depending on how it's shimmed up against this bearing here, these shims fit on here and they're incredibly important to put the correct preload onto this bearing. So you must find them. It will definitely have them. They either stick on there or they stick on here. And there's normally multiple ones, there you are. So make sure you don't get those muddled up if you do two sides at once. And when you put them back together, it's imperative that these are mint clean so you don't get a piece of gravel in there which would af affect the thickness of them. So these, once you've found them, make sure that you've got them all. Put these somewhere safe. 
Once those are removed and you've cleaned up this surface, place a cloth over there. Definitely place a cloth over there. If I'm doing any other work, what I actually do is I place a cloth over there and I tape it up so it can't be knocked or moved. That cloth's gonna save your life. Um, any muck, dirt, nuts and bolts, anything like that, you're gonna stop them falling into the bottom of the, of the leg there. And as you can see now, we've got great access to the boot. We can remove that, so we've got to get inside there and, and get the other okay, inside bolt to off. Remove the inside UJ clamp now. And unfortunately, there's no easy way of doing this. Um, there are flexible screwdrivers on the market. There are all different ways, long screwdrivers. The clamp is stuck right at the back. I use a quarter drive kit with a universal joint on it. And obviously what you're going to do is make your way up there and try and get at this, this clip. Get on there and undo it. You can use something now to tease this boot off. You don't need to damage your neck, see, get it back on. And off she comes. And there we have it. There is the old boot.